This tiny little chunk of awesome is AMD's 7700K. It's an APU and you definitely need to stick around to find out more. So to give you an incredibly brief hardware overview, it comes in a nice box with a th very thick seal on the top. It comes with a stock heatsink as usual. It's a PGA chip or print pin grid array which means there's gold pins sticking at the back of this so be careful when you're handling it. It also comes with an AMD A series black edition sticker and a small leaflet slash information guide type thing. As I said, this is PGA, so be careful when you hold it and try not to touch the top. Hold it by the sides and just sort of don't touch the pins. Also, when you're installing it, make sure that that gold triangle on the bottom left is aligned up correctly with the uh, little triangle in the socket itself. We're going to be taking you through all the performance now, so definitely stick around as uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So this is going to be uh, act as the sort of performance benchmarks um, just segment here, since we don't really have much footage, and unless you want me to spin around the uh, CPU cooler about 30 times while I talk about this, I thought this would be a better way to do it. Now, I'm going to start off with the first one that we talked about, uh, the first test we actually did, which is the Cinebench test. So it got 296 uh, Cinebench points in the CPU and 38 FPS, or 38.18 um, FPS, on average uh, in our testing in the OpenGL test. Now that's pretty decent considering this is an A10 class uh, APU accelerated processing unit which combines the CPU and GPU. It's under 100 pounds and as I said it's A10 class so it's the highest end APU or uh, highest class end APU and I believe it's third from the top uh, in terms of uh, you know AMD's uh, lineup there. But considering you're paying less than 100 pounds for your GPU uh, and CPU Bearing in mind that most GPUs uh, cost around about £100 that do anything near this good, um, this is a pretty compelling value for money. It's a quad core, so it's actually relatively decent performance for everyday use, especially in things like web browsing and such. Uh, and if you did want to do any more advanced work, such as video editing, it still does provide, uh, perform pretty well, and considering that it has that GPU on board, if you did add in another GPU, you could possibly even use the onboard GPU uh, as a sort of acceleration uh, to be able to help with things like video encoding and stuff, which is pretty interesting. Now in terms of handbrake, um, we actually use that as one of our tests, which is a video transcoder, so it turns you know, MKVs into MP4s and stuff like that, um, it just transcodes video. So we actually took a raw Blu-ray um, that we had, so uh, it was the first Matrix actually, um, it was a 13 gigabyte file. We transcoded that into an MP4 which ended up being 6 gig, and it took 74 minutes to do. That's uh, it averaged out about 50 FPS um, uh, sort of rendering time, which is pretty decent considering that you know, as I said, it is a quad core, uh, and the film was uh, incredibly long. So you know, it's better than real time, which is definitely a plus, uh, and it's you know, it's still decent for relatively light workloads. Now to give you a quick run up of the games, as you can see, we used our standard games, although all of these games were on lower medium settings. I believe Crisis and Unigen were the ones that were on low, and the rest were on medium. Now as you can see. BF4, Bioshock and Grid 2 were all definitely playable um, at around about 30 FPS and you know it is uh, relatively decent for you know the price considering that it's under, under 100 pounds. Unfortunately Crisis 3 just wasn't playable and was almost impossible to complete the benchmark and Unigen was a bit of a stuttery mess even though I had to turn everything including tessellation um, and just everything down to either off or low. Now, Bear in mind this is a relatively value CPU, so our APU, sorry, so if you are going to be playing things like, you know, League of Legends, World of Tanks, this is definitely going to be better off for you than trying to play hard, you know, harder games to run such as Battlefield or Bioshock. Other than that, as I said, this is a fantastic little chip for performance wise and we'll be including more information on the website. To uh, just talk about the pros and cons real quick, um, the pros of this is definitely that it's cheap, you're paying less than £100 for both your CPU and GPU, which means this is fantastic for light gaming, media centre use, day to day office work, and considering it's a quad core as well, that's pretty decent. Now the cons of this, as I said, it's not the most powerful, I did mention that it's incredibly power inefficient, as in it, it, requ it will require a relatively large power supply for what it is, um, it'll also, uh, I believe something like a 500 watt would probably be uh, pretty, be pretty good. Um, also, you're definitely going to need a uh, you know an aftermarket heatsink, which is something that you don't necessarily need for something like the Pentium G3420 I showed a second ago. Um, but you know you will need one. Uh, something like the Coolmaster Hyper 212 Evo is probably going to be good, um, although you may want something beefier. 
So that's kind of the cons. It's, it's really, uh, you know, uh, inefficient in terms of power and heat output, but it is great in terms of just sheer performance for money. It's definitely going to get the, uh, the value for money award. It's definitely going to get a five for value for money. In terms of performance, um, it's going to get a four, I think. It's not fantastic, but it's, as I said, it's good value for money, so it balances out. In terms of functionality, I'm actually going to give this one a three because it's, uh, this platform is actually relatively old. It's got a very, uh, a relatively outdated feature set. It doesn't include things like M.2 support um, or even things like uh, SAT Express, um, you know, USB 3 Type uh, C. That's definitely not coming uh, until a new chipset comes out, um, and things like just general USB uh, USB uh, 3 support as well. That's a little bit out uh, out of date as well. So we're gonna. Uh, that's definitely gonna be something that I would like to see improved. And hopefully there will be a, a new chipset coming out relatively shortly um, to sort of update this lineup. Um, other than that, it's, uh, it's going to get a, uh, well I guess it's going to have to get a 5 for style because it's a chip, it's quite good, it's relatively decent size and it's got the arrow in the right place. Uh, for a Tetris Review score, it's going to get a 4. It's not fantastic, but it's not terrible. So it kind of sits in the middle uh, and it is, as I said, quite good for value for money, so that's going to bump it up to the 4. It's going to get the Budget Buster Award because, as I said, it's just fantastic value for money. Uh, and if you, this, this is you know, in your price range, definitely, definitely take a look at it. Now, I would recommend personally if you went for something like an Athlon X4 and went for uh, you know uh, a dedicated hundred pounds of GPU type uh, type you know level, just because that's probably going to get you a lot better performance. And it, obviously, with even with the Gave Up motherboard, you still have that upgradeability to throw on a graphics card, but there'll be less heat output in general. Uh, you know, the the graphics card will have a better stock heat sink on it, and the CPU will have less load on it. But overall, you know, I that's my personal recommendation if you can afford it. If not, this is a you know a fantastic chip, as I said, for media center use and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, please do subscribe if you haven't already. If this is the first video version you've watched, do check out some of the other ones. And as I said, subscribe. It helps us out a hell of a lot. Uh, and you know, we love your feedback as well. So leave any thoughts you have in the comments down below. And uh, we do like to switch things up a tiny bit. So uh, did you like this style? Did you not? Do you want me to go away and just uh, sort of shut up now? Uh, if you do, leave that down below, uh, down below in the comments. Also, please hit the like button or the dislike button. And as I said, justify your views in the comments down below. Um, if you didn't didn't like the, the video, let us know why. Uh, and uh, as uh, same, if you did like it, let us know why as well. Please do check out the website. We do try really hard to make sure that you get the best content possible on both written and video sites, and it does help us out a hell of a lot if you can just check it out and you know just see what you think. As I said, let us know in the comments down below about you know anything you've seen here. And other than that, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for me. Um, Thanks for watching, uh, and yeah, we'll see you on the next video. So thanks for watching this Tech Team GB video. You've probably seen enough of me already, so I'm going to go away. Right after I say, if you haven't already like or dislike, just let us know why in the comments down below as well. Um, check out some of our other videos, hopefully there'll be some somewhere around me. And then also, um, feel free to subscribe as well, that really helps us out. Um, and yeah, obviously shows companies that you love us. So if you do love us, check us out on Facebook or Twitter, hopefully there will also be some stuff around here maybe. Um, but otherwise that's pretty much it from me, so we'll see you all in the next video.